What's going on guys? So this is how I'm going to show you how I glue up a G10 liner to a micarta G10 or a wood scale. You can see what I have here is a raw G10 and a raw black micarta. If you were going to try to just glue these up, um, they would stick, but it wouldn't be ideal given heat, time, shock, any of that could release the G10 liner from the scale. So I'm going to show you how I do it. And this is all the supplies you need. I got a little squirt bottle of acetone. You could also use toluene or MEK. Just beware because MEK is a little bit of a corrosive, not only a cleaner, it corrodes. I also have some JB Weld five minute epoxy. This is real good stuff. Your working time is slow, um, but it is plenty, plenty hard. And I work in the aerospace industry and believe it or not, JB Weld, five minute is used on everything from satellites to airplanes and, and structural uh, glue ups. So it's really good stuff. I use a Dixie cup, 150 grit paper, cleaning patches that are usually used for cleaning guns, but you could buy them two to three pounds of them for less than a buck at some sporting goods stores. I go to big five and get these. They work awesome for cleanups, glue ups, and also oiling blades. So I'm gonna show you uh, how I do this. I'm just gonna flip the camera around. It's real simple, real easy process. So all I do, I just pick a side, that's it. 150 grit paper. I sand both the G10 liner and the micard or the G10 scale. I sand it completely with 150 grit paper until there's no shiny surfaces and I have essentially micro scratched the entire surface for good adhesion. I'll show you how I do that. Real simple, really easy, and it does not take a long time at all. I do a cross acting pattern. I go lengthwise, then I go across the scale at a 45 degree angle. And that gives me a good cross hatch pattern that ensures that my entire scale has been sound, sanded down to the grit that I need. And I have found 150 grit, not only in knife making, but also what I do in the aerospace industry, provides the best surface for most two part epoxies being that they have a, um, a structure that is small enough to adhere to 150 grit, but large enough that if you have a 36 or 80 grit, sometimes it will not penetrate. That's how long it takes. So now that I have that completely sanded down, I will now take some of my, I use toluene because it cleans, it evaporates, it leaves no film, and it also abrades certain things. So G10, it'll actually etch the surface, making the adhesion even better. So now I have every surface sanded and every surface clean. Just like that, real easy. Now that I have everything sanded, it's completely clean. I'm going to mix equal parts 50-50, hardener and resin. Now, don't get too concerned if it's not just perfect equal parts. Um, most of these only need about a fourth ratio of catalyst, which is your hardener to your resins. With your JB Weld or with most of your Loctites or 3Ms, a quarter or more will do. So even if you get close to 50-50 mix, it's spot on. It'll just take longer or shorter for it to cure. So real easy.
That's my part A and equal parts part B. More of a concern when you use your two part epoxies from if you've got perfect 50 50 ratio is actually mixing. You need to ensure that it is fully mixed. That will give you the best adhesion and strength to weight ratio. So do not be totally concerned with ratios. Be more concerned with mixes. You need to ensure it's fully mixed together. And that just takes some time. Now that once it's fully mixed, I apply to one side and one side only. And you apply to that sanded and cleaned your etched side of your scale, making sure that you have plenty of epoxy. Bear in mind, a completely flat surface, about 75% of your epoxy is going to squirt or rush out of the sides, but that's okay. As long as you have a nice equal coating. Now just a little observation, even with established knife makers, is when you use epoxies, even when you use your five minute epoxy, don't rush it. Five minutes is actually quite a bit of time to work with this epoxy. Just take your time and it'll be all good. So a simple Dixie cup, popsicle stick, makes everything easy. Now that I have that, I take my etched side of my liner and all I do is place it right on top. I place it right on top. If you have access to clamps, which I do, go ahead and use those. If not, you could use a vise. You could use even heavy, heavy weights as long as they're flat. But keep in mind, it will slide around. So ensure that it's squared. And there you have it. Then you just let it completely dry. Preferably overnight, up to 72 hours, you'll be okay. This will be the blank I'll be grinding out today. This is my model, it's called the Scarface. Has a nice little thumb ramp, has jimping all over the place. It could be ground double edge, single edge, hollow, flat. Um, it serves its, well, its purpose pretty well for mostly uh, like a concealed carry or like a fighting type knife, but it also has a long enough belly that it could be used for game processing and skinning. Uh, the thing though is, is I deal with a lot of customers and a lot of orders. So I set my blades up in a jig like this one. This one's from OBM. Has a nice little angle indicator. I'll be doing a 10 degree hollow grind main bevel on this blade. I have stops set up. And I also have the tip of the blade slightly higher than the leading edge. And that serves a purpose. Um, I want to get a really deep grind in it. I want that bevel to be super, super tall, um, almost the full length or the full height of the blade. And I use a grinding jig when I have to do repeatable grinds. If I'm just doing a one-off, I'll just freehand it but I'll be making this blade for many customers. So what they see on my site is what they get. So it has to be exact and spot on. And the only thing that I mark is that little Sharpie mark for my plunge grind. That's where I want my plunge grind to end up. That's the finished length of my plunge grind. I do not do a center scribe. I freehand and free essentially I, my center, uh, because my grinds, uh, they might differ from blade to blade as far as angle and approach. And they also might differ on height and length. So my center line is, is established at the final stages of my grind. 
And that's how I set up my jig. We'll take it over the grinder. So this is my grinder setup. It's a Mary braid, but any two by 72 will work. I have it on a six inch wheel, but you could also do a flat platen, or you could even do a slack belt grind on pretty much any of your blades. It just depends on the purpose and what the end user or the customer is gonna be using this blade for. I'm gonna be doing a hollow grind, so I established a super thin profile, but there's a little bit more strength the higher up it goes towards the spine. On my grinds, I start with a 36 it, 36 grit, or a 40 grit, and then I work myself up to a 80, to a 120, to a 240, all the way up to a thousand. So I get about 90% of my grind done with a 36 or a 40 grit belt. And then I do final passes on each grit of those belts just to make it look presentable, good grind lines, and also finished profile. So 36, all the way up to 1,000. I'm gonna start grinding this blade out. Now, uh, keep in mind, I typically wear a respirator, but since I'll be talking through this, um, I'm gonna just gonna make it quick and short without a respirator, but always ensure that you have your gloves and your eye pro on. This is how uh, simple it will be. I'm just gonna start on my plunge line and I'm gonna do a full uh, few passes and I'll show you the profile and then we'll just continue with the steps. Just keep doing that until you get the height and you also get your center on your bevel and then continue through your belt. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here. I'm going to finish one side out and I'll show you the completed blade. So I took about eight passes on my 36 and three passes each on each continuous belt. And you can see there's my grind. I have a nice graduated bevel onto my plunge, nice even sanding strokes. That grind goes about a little bit more halfway up towards the spine. My center line is on. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the blade over in the exact same position and I'll do the other side. So there's the completed bevel. Takes less than about five minutes if you're using good belts. Uh, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna still continue with my six inch contact wheel. This has 220 grit paper in it. I'm going to clean the top spine of this blade and I'm also going to soften the shoulders on it. Um, nothing worse than real sharp angles on a blade. It has to be user friendly. Uh, any part of the blade other than the actual cutting edge itself, if a user touches, it needs to be comfortable. And I'm just using 220 grit paper. paper. Um, a few passes is all it takes. Now that I have my spine clean, now I'm going to soften the shoulders. So within less than two minutes, we have softened shoulders, clean spine. That's pretty much it. That's how I grind the blade out. Make sure you have your center line perfect. Um, but the thing with grinding and blades is a hollow ground 
flat ground convex if you put an apple seed edge on it whatever you do specific wise it has to serve a purpose so this being a fighting knife but also a long belly could be used for fighting skinning game i do a hollow grind gives me a razor sharp edge but it also gives me a little bit more strength towards the spine i soften the shoulders that way, no matter where the user touches on this blade, it's comfortable for him or her. All right, so what I'm gonna show you now is how I not only put my maker's mark, how I normalize, and how I heat treat. So even when you do stock removal, there's a lot of stresses that are put into the blade, especially the finer grits you get, the higher the heat that that belt produces. So you need to normalize even when you do stock removal on a blade. But I killed two birds with one stone, so I actually used my maker's mark, which I have my stamp here. I use this as my normalizing process. So I'll pull my blank out, I'll stamp my maker's mark, and then when I stamp my maker's mark, I'll actually let it cool back down to ambient room temperature before I quench. So I'll normalize it, put it back in the forge, quench. And all I use is a pair of tongs, my maker's mark, two pound hammer, and then on the ground I just have an ammo can full of my quench oil. And for this steel, which is 1070, canola oil will work. It works absolutely fine. Now my blade is up to temperature. It's orange on the camera. It looks like white hot, but it is orange. So I'll get it back up to orange. I'll stamp it and I'll let it cool down. And there we have my maker's mark. So for 1070, like I said, I'm using canola oil. It's right here. It does not need to be preheated, but if you do find that the hardness of your blade is not where it should be, you can mess up the temperature of your quench oil. Room temperature quench oil is good to go. It does not need to be heated up above uh, what a lot of people do, but keep in mind, you don't want it cold. So at least minimum room temperature. So now that I have my blade up to temperature, you don't need any fancy equipment. It helps, but you don't need it. You can judge by your eye. So on 1070, I'm gonna get it to like an orangish red color, more on the orange part. When it gets to orange, I'm gonna let it soak in that temperature for five minutes, which it has done so, and then I'm just gonna quench it. On the camera, it'll look like white and yellow hot, but it's actually orange. Full submerge, 10 to 15 seconds in the oil, pull it out, I check for straightness right away, there has been no warps, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on a colder surface, the concrete in my shop is perfect, sometimes your anvil if it's still cold uh, is good, but a cold flat surface and I'm going to let it completely cool down before I test hardness. I will not test hardness right now. I'll let it completely cool and then I'll check the edge for hardness. So what I have here is the scales that we have glued up. I've actually taken the G10 sides and I've super glued both of them together just with two tiny dots of super glue. And then to make it easy, I have two tiny dots of super glue here and here on the blade itself and I super glue that to my tang. It looks just like this. So we have both inside of the handle and outside of the scales where they need to be glued on just with super glue. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill the pilot holes for the shafts of my Gussel bolts 
which these are my bolts, these tiny little guys. And what you'll need is a 9 64th size drill bit for this style. And to drill the pilot and the countersink for the head, you'll need a quarter inch bit. So now that I have my pilot holes drilled for my bolts for my handles, I'm going to take it over to my porta band saw. You could also use a sander or a grinder with a grinding disc, but I'm going to porta band a rough shape of my handle. Essentially, I'm just going to follow the profile of my blade. Once I get all the excess cut off, then it makes it easier for my final um, fitting and sanding. So I'm going to cut this out and then I'll show you what it looks like after it is cut out. So here's my blade. This is after I took the vast majority of the scale material off of my porta band. I just use the blade itself to run my saw blade as a guide. I take off most of the material that way I could save my belt life on my 2x72. But like I said, you could also remove this material with an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. But if you have a porta band, it just makes life that much easier. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop these scales off. You could do that with a razor blade, you could do it with a hammer, with a small screwdriver. Really easy if you just use a little bit of uh, your adhesive, your super glue. So I'm going to pop them off and I'm going to drill my countersinks for the head of my bolts. Hey guys, so I have my blade here and all I've done is I have glued the scales on and I've used those bolts to actually hold it on. Um, so not only is it epoxied on, they're bolted on with a mechanical connection. And I just glued these on the same way I would do gluing a G10 liner on scales. I use sandpaper 150 grit on the blade itself and on the handles. I scratch the entire surface up, micro scratch it, and then I clean it really well with uh, acetone or MEK or toluene. And then I use my two-part epoxy and I just glue it on and I use the hardware itself. And it's no different if you're using like a Corby bolt to hold it in place. So it's fully cured. And what I'm gonna do now is I just have an 80 grit belt and I'm gonna go from 80 grit to 220 on this uh, two by 72 and I'm gonna profile the handle. I'm gonna start with the actual spine, the butt, and the part of the handle where you index. So I'm gonna get it profiled out. So with just a few passes, I'm already starting to get my profile set. Keep in mind, don't work in one area for too long or with too much pressure. You don't wanna heat your epoxy so much that it releases. Just a few passes, I'm starting to get that comfortable profile. And there's really no limit of your angle or how you wanna shape your handle. Shape it to how it's comfortable for you, because if it's comfortable for you, more than likely it's gonna be comfortable for everybody else. So now that I have my spine and my index area all cleaned up, I've went from 80 to 220 grit. I have now set my platen at a very steep angle and what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to use it to profile the shoulders of my knife. I don't want my knife blade to have any square edges, especially on the handle, but you can use angles. You don't have to freehand. You can use your platen to help you out to establish a profile. I'm going to make multiple passes on each side until I get a comfortable profile. So I have my blade handle about 50% done. You can see that I've softened the shoulders. I've beveled the butt of it, beveled the front. Everything where your index finger indexes is nice and smooth. Pinky, nice and smooth. You can see there's still a lot of scratch marks. It just takes time. This is 80 grit. Do this all the way up to 220 to 400 grit and you'll get a nice smooth finish on your G10 or your micarta. It just takes a lot of time. So whether you're hand sanding or you have a belt grinder, move up in your grits until your desired finish and then you should be good to go. So this is the blade after two coats of the Oxfo blue coating. 
you can see that it does a pretty dang good job of giving you a nice black color so the next step I'm going to do and you don't have to do this this is just my per personal thing is I take it to a vibrating tumbler just like this one or you could use even like a jar with some uh, rocks or some ceramic media in here I have 80 grit ceramic media and some antifreeze as a cutting agent I'm gonna submerge the whole blade in there and I'm gonna tumble this for roughly five to ten minutes until it gives me a desired finish of that um, black oxide tumbled finish. So I'm just gonna put the blade in here, turn it on for about five minutes. If I don't get the desired results, I'll give it another five minutes. So now that we're at the final stages of our build, we only have one thing left to do and that's sharpen the blade. And I do that using my two by 72 and I have a 220 grit belt on it. I use a pretty low speed and I establish my burr edge with 220 grit. And that's the only grit belt that I use. After 220 grit, I have a paper wheel sharpening system. And this is what gives me my razor edge. On this wheel, there's 400 grit aluminum oxide abrasive. And on this wheel, there's just polish, metal polish, just like you could get at any hardware store or Harbor Freight. And what I do is I establish my edge on the belt. Then I come over here and I do two to three passes on each side with each wheel with aluminum oxide and with the polish and I have a razor edge. That's after just two passes each side on the 220 grit. And there we have it. Nice, sharp edge. The paper will, will give you a razor sharp edge within just a few passes. But if you don't have a paper wheel system, use your 220 grit and go up to the highest grit that you can. Um, prior to the paper wheel system, I was taking these all the way up to a thousand grit and you could get them as sharp as a razor. This is just a little bit easier and more efficient.